Hey athletes, how are you? Coach Ryder from DHP Health and Fitness to go over proper squat technique with you today. Squat is one of our most common exercises we do at our home gyms and in the public gyms and one of the most popularly done wrong exercises also. So we're gonna go over a couple of fundamental techniques of doing your squats and a couple of advanced techniques to allow you to perform them better. The first and most important thing about our squat technique is actually our setup. What are we doing before we squat? A lot of times we get into these abnormal positions. We start from here and like, okay, I'm gonna do my work. And we're not starting from pristine uh, posture and balance points to start off with. So we wanna start off with the feet, shoulder width or so apart, all right? General rule of thumb is my butt should fit between my knees and my feet. Also, when I start off, I wanna make sure that my weight is equally balanced that I have weight on my toes and weight on my back of my heel, so that like an eagle grabbing a bench, my toes and my feet are grabbing into the floor. Once my weight is equally balanced, I bring the knees back, tighten up the quads, squeeze the butt, it's gonna have nice pelvic tension here, pull my abs into place, make sure my ribs aren't open or too far closed, but neutral tension here, bring my shoulders up, back and down. This is anatomically neutral position. This is the best way for you to approach any one of your squats or any one of your barbell lifts, be it off of a rack, a back squat, a clean, a jerk, whatever it's gonna be, having this basic anatomical positioning set up. From here, I very simply wanna make sure we bend from the hips first, setting the butt back, keeping the knees above the feet as we come down. The hands can come forward and up for balance and also keep our posture up rather than bending down as we come through that range of motion. So again, Butt's gonna come back first. I'm not bending from the knees. I'm bending from the waist, sending those hips back, keeping my chest up tall. My knees stay tracking over my feet as I come down. Ideally, if my joints and range of motion will allow me, having the hip crease drop below the tops of the knees to signify full range of motion. Coming down and coming back up. Now, of course, hand position is important. I like to make sure that all my athletes maintain good shoulder positioning. That way as we come forward, we're not hugging around, letting the shoulders drop forward, or having the body come to that immature position, pancaking to the floor, making sure we try to stay upright as much as possible with the shoulders back as much as possible, maintaining a good back squat form in all of our positions. Same thing goes for overhead or in a front rack position. For those of you that are competitive athletes, let's talk a little bit about how to get some speed into these repetitions, right? There are different motions we can use with our hands to allow us to get a little bit more speed and fluidity with our motion. The most common one is the old standard hug the tree method, where we come down at our squat, hugging at the bottom as we come up using the hands to help the hip thrust. Coming down and up, hands keeping the balance at the bottom and helping us to open the hips at the top. This is a great repetition for really fast consecutive motions. Um, get our calorie rate up, our heart rate up really high. Another way of doing this too is what I call the swooping motion. I actually prefer this method for longer durations. If I'm doing maybe 50 to 100 squats unbroken and I want to keep my respiratory tempo, my cardiovascular rate down and be able to have a nice breathing, moving flow. What I'm going to do with this one is, key thing is, I must make sure that I can maintain upright posture doing this. If I find myself as an immature squatter coming down with my chest over my body, this is a no-no method. We're always gonna stick to the block the sun out, come up and come down until we get that prerequisite body positioning. But if I can keep my body upright, I wanna start using the swoop method where I bring my hands back on the way down and up with me on the way up, using my arms to gain momentum as I bring my body up away from the floor. So as I come down, my arms are back, and I swoop on the way up. Swoop, 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 swoop. Notice the hands aren't hitting the floor. If you have monkey arms like me, they may every once in a while, but ideally what's going on here is we're loading the system down, and as I start to make that transition from the bottom, that momentum of my arms takes a little bit of the weight off my legs and allows me to get a nice big breath. <gasps> allowing me to cycle smoothly at a nice rate and rhythm and just take a little bit of that muscular demand off the legs. Like I said, I like to use that method personally if I have a large volume of reps to do or maybe I'm doing another leg burning exercise 
like assault bikes or lunges or something like that, that's gonna build up a lot of lactic fatigue. If I have a short set, 10, 20, 30, maybe even 50, that I need to bust out really quick, I'm gonna go down into that shrugging hand motion way of hugging the tree and let the hips open up. That's gonna allow me to get a little faster repetition, quicker cycle time, but it's also gonna increase your respiratory rate and your heart rate. So make sure you're choosing a pattern that's gonna work best for you. And like I said, with the swoop method, make sure you have that prerequisite of having the chest up. If you're squatting here, this is no good for your functional form. We wanna make sure that we have a good upright spine and chest. All right, give me your feedback on them. Let me know how those shorten up your times and how much better you can perform those movements. And I'll talk to you next time. Enjoy. Bye.